My name is Kelly Kramerick. I'm 25 years old and I'm a freelance audio engineer and I'm set to make about $40,000 this year. Some people just stay in one trade, one part of audio. Um, I like to do a little bit of everything. So I work in a studio as a recording and mixing engineer. Um, I work in live sound as a monitor and front of house engineer. In film, I'm a production sound mixer, so my main goal is to get the dialogue on set. Then in post-production, that's when we focus on sound effects, um, creating them, taking them from a library, fully recording that, footsteps, um, basically recreating the world that we already recorded um, in a studio setting so we have more control over it. And I also am a graduate student, um, and I'm in the recording arts program, so I'll be graduating soon. Um, it was only a two-year program, but um, just fine-tuning all of my skills uh, for the real world. One of my favorite projects so far um, has been I was working monitors um, at a festival, and so one of the bands that I worked for, I just absolutely loved them. Um, they were awesome, their music, everything about them. Um, and so I gave them my card and said, you know, if you ever want to record, um, I work at a studio, and it'd be cool if you came on down. Um, and they contacted me. And so I brought them into the studio, and it was their first time in a studio, and they were so excited. So the cool, extra cool part is that um, we're making an EP, a three-song EP, and once it's mixed, um, fully recorded, they're going to bring that out on their live tour this summer, and then I'll probably mix them again this summer. So um, it's really cool to work in live and in the studio just because I get the opportunity to find artists that maybe didn't think that the studio was a possibility. When people have an idea to make music, um, even from the, the smallest part, like the beginning, they just have a guitar with a couple of chords um, and some lyrics. Helping them make it into a song, record it, mix it, produce it, that whole process is just super rewarding because then they have something um, for the rest of their lives and it helps um, music in general. You know, it's meant to invoke feelings in people um, and that's awesome. That's why I love music is because I get goosebumps, you know, when you listen to a seven minute rock ballad, it's like, oh my God, this is epic. Like, and that I wanna make, help make other people feel that on the other side of things. Having a good ear is obviously very important in audio engineering. You just have to, you have to know good rhythm, um, you have to know the different frequencies, the different frequency ranges that instruments live in, um, and that's just kind of the basis of audio engineering. Um, if you're in a live sound setting, you know, frequencies that pop out feedback. Um, feedback is when uh, the speaker picks up the signal from the microphone, it creates a loop, and that's when you hear that like screeching high frequency noise. Um, that's like my biggest enemy as a modern engineer. If one of those pitches starts ringing out, um, I have to be able to know exactly what frequency that is and then pull it out immediately because once it happens and it starts going it's just going to get worse and louder um, and it'll just ruin the performance so I have to be able to exactly know what frequency that is to pull it out fast and that's why it's super important to know um, all of your frequencies exactly what they sound like um, and that can be taught I think if you just sit with headphones on it's really annoying um, but if you just sit there and listen to different pitches um, and that's how you learn how I mean that's how I did it other skills that are super important is just having a great personality, um, being easy to talk to. When I'm a monitor engineer in a festival setting, um, I have 15 minute changeovers um, from one band to the next and no sound check basically. You just have a line check. Um, so it makes sure that the signal's coming through. And in that 15 minutes, we have to get the other band off, the new band on, and then maybe while they're walking on stage, they say, I want kick, snare, and uh, bass in my mix. And I say, okay, and then I just kind of pull it up a little bit and then for the first song they're looking at me um, and saying like it's all about hand signals which is funny because everyone's different but you know the guitar player I'll like point to the bass and be like up and I'm like okay and then I have to like look at them I'm always like the weirdest person when I'm a modern engineer because I'm always like like constantly just like seeing who I can help and how um, because when you're dialing it in I mean it, you want to make their performance go off without a hitch um, and if they can't hear everything that's just not gonna happen sometimes you have to make a mistake to learn something for real um, and it's usually big mistakes that you learn something and you're like I will never do that again you know 
So making a mistake in live sound is something that I haven't done yet, and I know it's gonna happen, so that's like really scary for me. I just don't, maybe it won't ever happen, I'll knock on wood, but um, that's really scary because um, in these high stakes settings, you know, if you, when you make a mistake, it's, it's big. Um, but that's also another part um, of coming back from that mistake, how fast you can fix your mistake, um, and if the artist even knows that you made a mistake is another part of it. In Denver, Colorado, being a freelance engineer, there's a ton of live work all over the place. In the studio world, uh, everybody is mostly freelance unless you own a studio, um, and that means that you have to bring your own clients in. Um, my boss is awesome, and I get uh, studio leads from him, um, but for the most part, you're expected to bring your own work in if you want to make money. You can make anywhere um, from 30,000 or less, um, depending on how often you do this, um, up to $200,000 or, you know, millions um, every year. It just depends on who you record, who you work for. Um, if I were to get picked up by um, a national touring act and then go on tour with them for a year, I would be in that higher bracket. If I landed someone in the studio and I recorded their first album um, and then it went platinum, you know, I would make money off of that. Um, not necessarily because once my job is done in the studio with that album, I don't continue to make money off of it. But I would hope that that artist would bring me back for the next one and then, you know, you get your name out there and you keep going from there. The way that I have gotten where I am um, is just going to meet people all the time. I know everybody um, that is an engineer in Denver. I've been to every studio in Denver. Um, I'm very friendly and outgoing. Um, if I ever meet someone, I ask them how their studio works, um, who they hire, how all of that goes, um, and if they have any opportunities. I'm always looking for new opportunities. And if someone ever brings one my way, I say yes. Um, even if it's unpaid, I end up saying yes. It could lead to just um, a new connection with someone, um, and that's huge in this industry because um, I don't really want to have to advertise myself. I think it would be cool to just keep getting gigs by word of mouth.